Hi, I'm going to present you our work on adaptive inference through early exit networks, a survey paper going through the design decisions, challenges and future directions of early exiting. Some words about myself first. My name is Stefanos, I'm Greek and I'm a machine learning researcher at Samsung AI Center in Cambridge, UK. I'm also an alumnus of the University of Cambridge and CERN in Switzerland. My research interests revolve around distributed and mobile systems, federated learning and in general efficient ways to do ML on devices. This is an index slide of my talk. First, I'm going to present the current status quo of mobile DNA inference and how current solutions approach the innate challenges. Next, I'm going to dive deeper into progressive inference and early exit networks, going through the design of such models. Next, I'm going to talk about training methods for early exit networks. And last, I'm going to talk about the early exit network deployment with respect to inference and the underlying hardware. Finally, I'm going to lay out the most pressing open challenges in the realm of early exiting and present some of the most prominent future research directions. First, let's talk about DNA inference on mobile and embedded settings. It is a fact that deep neural networks have been getting more and more accurate at the expense of also getting deeper and wider. Although advances in hardware accelerators have enabled training and inference at scale, the current trends of models of larger footprint undoubtedly affects their deployability in the mobile setting. Moving to the device landscape out there, this has always been very heterogeneous, be it in terms of computational capabilities, memory size, battery capacity, or even, or even thermal dissipation. In fact, in the wild one can find various device devices of different form factors, TDPs, and equipped with different SOCs spanning across different device tiers and generations. Last, these devices support multitasking and thus the external workload coming from various applications can vary dynamically. So the, questions that, the question that shapes is how can we run a deep neural network inference as fast and efficiently as possible under specific SLOs or deadlines across devices without breaking the bank. Well, in static network architectures this is not entirely possible. Current solutions largely span across four families of approaches. First, there are offline techniques taking advantage of the accuracy latency trade-off in deep neural networks, including techniques such as pruning, quantization, low rank approximation and hand or NAS designed model architectures. Next, there are techniques that dynamically adjust the network for inference dependent on the input or system parameters. Such include dynamic routing, runtime channel pruning, filter selection, fractional execution and layer skipping solutions such as block drop. One could also include early exiting in this group. Subsequently, one can leverage external resources for partly or wholly offloading inference execution to a remote endpoint. And last, there are techniques that use a group of models for inference, either through specialized model selection or through network cascades. However, all techniques come with their own trade-offs. And there is yet a solution to fit all needs. Early exiting emerges as a prominent way of dynamically adjusting the workload to the input at hand, allocating computation depending on the difficulty of the input, a method that resonates with a natural way of thinking. Take for example an early exit network and two sample images, one with a simpler background and another with a more intricate one. As the image propagates through the network, it, does, it goes through um, each of the layers and propagates to the exit when a junction is met. If the network is confident enough about the result, then it can terminate the computation early and output the result. If not, it can continue processing until a confident result is provided or the end of the network is reached. Although this example is on a vision classification task, early exiting has been successfully applied to various tasks and modalities, as will be seen in the next slide. This table represents related work in early exiting across modalities and tasks. Although most works have focused on vision and classification, there has been a line of work applying early exiting on NLP tasks over transformer-based networks and even speech. Focusing on the categorization of works, the first group are all techniques applied to a single model architecture, either hand-tuned, end-to-end, such as the case of multi-scale DenseNet, or using an existing backbone network, such as the case of FastBird. The next group 
comprises techniques that are network agnostic and can be applied to different model architectures for implementing early exiting. Following that, there are techniques that change the label distributions either by means of imposing a hierarchy of labels or by personalizing to different user distributions. The next group consists of works that learn the exit policy along the weights of the model, whereas the one after that focuses on adversarial robustness of early exit networks. Last, the final group consists of works that put hardware in the loop and co-optimize for deployment. But how does one design, train and deploy an early exit network in the first place? We're going to talk about each one of these steps separately. First, let's uh, talk about how an early exit network is designed by going through the network architecture, the early exit design and the early exit placement in the network. First, the early exit network uh, architecture. There are largely two approaches to go about designing such a network. First is to hand tune the architecture of the network end-to-end, -end, taking the early exit as an integral part of the network. And the second one is, an existing, is to take uh, an existing vanilla backbone architecture and then dis add distinct classifiers at varying positions. Each approach is offering distinct pros and cons, with the former allowing more degrees of freedom at the expense of flexibility or custo uh, the flexibility of customization for different targets, whereas the latter offers this flexibility at the expense of maximum target accuracy or early exit rates. Whatever the design approach of the early exit network may be, one still has to select the design of exits themselves with respect to the size of the rest of the network and the budget available. One decision is on the type of operations, for example, the regular versus depth-wise separable convolutions, whereas another is related to the size of the exit in terms of layers and channels or neurons per, per layer. This needs to be, these need to be carefully uh, selected as they affect the accuracy of the classifier, its exit rates, as well as the total average runtime of the early exit network. Essentially, while the early exits offer an early termination prospect, of redundant computation and avoiding redundant computation, on the other side of the coin, each exit not taken counts essentially as non-reusable overhead. Equally important, and at the same time, one needs to select how these early exits are, are placed inside the network, or even inside the network-specific blocks. Placing exits equidistantly can offer the most balanced frequency of intermediate results, but variable distances may resonate better with the architecture at hand. Uh, let me note also here that the distance is generally expressed as a number of operations or a number of parameters and not actual layers in the network. Next, after the design of the network has been settled and with training data set available, one can train an early exit network. There are different methods of training an early exit network, and in this section we will go through them and what each one is aimed at. By and large, there are two ways of training an early exit network, end-to-end -end and intermediate classifiers only, uh, noted as IC only. In the first case, the network is trained in one go with a loss signal propagating through the whole network simultaneously. This means that one needs to define a loss function that carefully balances exits amongst each other, as seen at the bottom left uh, part of the slide. Although this technique offers the most flexibility in terms of uh, open parameters to tune at training time, it can lead to convergence issues due to early exit crosstalk. On the other hand, and especially in the case of vanilla backbone with attached intermediate classifiers, these two components can be trained sequentially. First the backbone network, which may already come pre-trained, and subsequently the early exits, with the backbone being frozen. While this technique limits the number of free parameters, it offers the flexibility of training exits in vitro, and maintaining the vanilla network unchanged for sanity checks. Last, one can easily attach more early exits than these deployed and uh, select them at deployment time, depending on the hardware and uh, service, level, uh, service level agreement at hand. Uh, a slightly orthogonal route is to use knowledge distillation uh, to exchange knowledge between exits. For example, Exits can be learning by exits can be learning by using a combination of ground truth labels and the output of subsequent classifiers, as depicted in the equation of the bottom right corner of the slide. 
Uh, in this approach, there are two hyperparameters that need to be carefully selected, namely the distillation alpha, which uh, weighs the soft versus the hard labels, and then it's the distillation temperature, affecting how picky the softmax of the distribution of the client should be. Apart from the side knowledge uh, exchanged uh, between exits, this technique can also, applied, uh, can also be applied in, in uh, settings where label data is hard to get, essentially treating the teacher as grammar. Data out in the wild are not hardly, are hardly independent and identically distributed. In fact, different devices might have skewed labels or feature distributions, essentially tackling slightly different tasks. To this direction, there has been a line of work that personalizes early exits on client data. In such setting, settings, uh, label data can be difficult to find, and works are using the vanilla backbone prediction as the ground truth. Last, there is, an early, there is the early exit policy, which defines when a sample is ready to exit. On the one hand, the most popular approach is to have rule-based policies, which typically compare the confidence of the network expressed through the softmax top 1 or entropy with a threshold value, when above the sample exits and the inference terminates, whereas when not, the inference continues propagating to the rest of the network. Alternative approaches include asymmetric thresholds per classifier, uh, per class statistics, classifiers uh, trust scores, uh, or exiting after end classifiers agree on the result. On the other hand, policies can be uh, jointly learned with the rest of the model. There are largely three pieces of work tackling the exit policies in a differentiable or non-differentiable manner, two of which assume independence of the classifier decisions and one that does not. Last, after having the design selected and the network trained, the time comes for deploying the model on target hardware. In this section, I'm going to talk about the different deployment modes of early exit models and how to customize deployment for the use case and hardware at hand. There are three ways to deploy an early exit model for inference. Subnet-based, subnet-based inference, anytime, uh, anytime adaptive inference, and positive adaptive inference. The first assumes single exit deployment of a subnetwork up to an early exit, so as to fit to a target device. The second uses progressive inference and samples exit based on the difficulty in network's prediction, confidence and SLO at uh, hand. And the third one is using a collective budget which can be allocated for a number of early exit inferences in a throughput based manner. With respect to the target hardware, we can categorize deployments in three groups depending on the level of interaction of optimization. First, we have hardware-aware network design, where the goal is to optimize the architecture design and exits for execution on a specific target. This can be posed as a design exploration problem under constraints, and in conjunction with the IC-only approach, it can yield a train-once, deployer-everywhere paradigm to tackle device heterogeneity. Next, there are works that, given an early exit network design with specific exit rates, they tune the hardware parameters to optimize for a specific goal. This can be applied to hardware such as FPGAs or to lower level OS uh, components such as scheduling or DBFS policies. Last, one can allow for free parameters to both the model and hardware and co-design the two. Hitherto, we have gone through most of the decisions uh, to be made when designing, training and deploying an early exit network. However, there emerged certain open challenges and promising future directions in the realm of early exits which I'm uh, going to briefly de describe next. In terms of open challenges, so far we've seen an underrepresentation of early exiting on certain tasks and architectures in the table of slide 12. As such, applications of early exits on networks such as GANs or recurrent neural networks or even uh, autoencoders uh, remain to be seen. Moreover, we discussed that designing and placing early exits in a network requires careful consideration of the balance between early exiting and the imposed overhead. Striking this balance depends on the use case, network and data set at hand, and thus there has been no universal solution to fit all needs yet. Next, we saw that one can over-provision the network for deployment time parameterization, reflecting on the target device hardware and the runtime requirements of the use case. 
However, adding too many free parameters can easily blow up the search base, thus efficient traversal solutions become of utmost importance. With respect to, with respect to training, end-to-end -end and IC-only training offer different balance and trade-offs. Alternative training schemes may be required to combine the best of both worlds, however. Last, as far as exit policies are concerned, these need to closely reflect the readiness to exit or the ability of a result to be improved upon further propagation. At the same time, flexibility at runtime should be maintained as an accuracy latency trade-off turning knob. Thus, inspired by these topics uh, visited and the open challenges, we find the following directions as promising future avenues of research. First, we see a strong correlation of temporally or spatially correlated samples with early exit networks. This means that a network could potentially leverage previous inference or codec information for making smarter and faster decisions. Moreover, we see that not all exits need to output labels at the same domain. Specifically, we see a prominent, directions being, a, prom a prominent direction being the incorporation of hierarchy, with earlier exits adjusting their granularity to a higher abstraction level of detail, and deeper exits offering more fine-grained results. Next, along the same lines, we saw that in reality label and sample distributions are far from independent and identically distributed. As such, we expect more work to emerge leveraging these client data distributions to offer personalized results through early exits. In the same direction, non-IIDness and privacy concerns have, give, have given birth to alternative training methods such as federated learning, where training is moved towards the clients and closer to the data, and only aggregation occurs centrally to a, to a server. However, there's, uh, the heterogeneity of clients in the wild leads to discrepancies in the computation time. In this domain, we envision early exits playing an important role in mitigating stragglers by tuning the workload to the computational capacity of the client at hand. Last, we have seen different early exit policies for assessing uh, the network's confidence about an input, be it rule-based or learnable. To this end, we also see Bayesian learning as an alternative way of quantifying uncertainty about a prediction. Thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to take questions in the, follow in the remaining time. I would also like to provide certain announcements, if I may. Uh, first is that we're hiring for interns at Samsung AI Center in Cambridge, and secondly is that we will be organizing a tutorial on federated mobile sensing at Mobicon 2021. Thanks again for your time.